the last thing around duct system design, that question that I got was, well, then how do you know it's a good duct system? After the fact, how do I know that the system was designed correctly? Uh, and we're not talking from a building inspector point of view here. We're talking from a quality installation point of view. So, you know, there is things like the ResNet HVAC grading system. And if you are on Patreon as a member here, you can go back. If you just search ResNet or something, I did a post with a webinar a year or two ago on, on that grading system and how to walk through grading an HVAC system. But basically, uh, my personal opinion is if the system design right, it's going to be quiet. It's going to operate efficiently at the correct volume of air for the design of the system and the correct static pressure. All right. Also, it's not going to leak in the return of the supply. So we're going to meet the at least four CFM per hundred square feet that the unit services or less, because that's the International Energy Conservation Code over the last six years. All right. So um, that's my personal opinion on what makes a good HVAC duct system design. If you are going to replace a system and you are putting it into a duct system that doesn't meet all that criteria, you're going to end up with problems and you want to fix the most of all of those aspects, right? You want to be able to deliver the airflow. You want to be able to make sure it's below the uh, maximum static pressure or close to design as possible. You need to be quiet and it needs to be sealed and insulated, right? So you can't do all of it sometimes, but if you're able to do some of it, you can get a, a variable speed system to, to keep up, let's say. All right. And that actually impacts when we talk about velocity, and just to tie this all back together here, because <clears throat> it's this is where this is heading. A variable speed, let's say furnace or heat pump, is designed around your maximum speed or, or your design speed. It's usually medium or medium high. What happens when that thing turns down? Remember, now that air is going to move slower at a lower feet per minute. We may not be able to throw the air as far as we need to to mix the air in the room in air conditioning. We get things like uh, registers start to create condensation because it's in contact with that register so long. We, we see it raining inside the ductwork because the ductwork becomes below the dew point of the air because the air is moving so slow. So... You also want to make sure you have at least like 300 to 350 feet per minute at the register in order to keep that air moving and mixing in the room. Otherwise, people do some crazy things. They start turning the temperature down. They start fixing the fan speed on high. They they start messing with the system, and then they're not comfortable, and their electric bill's higher, right? Um, it goes the same for heating, too. When we talk about heat pumps or low-temperature um, heating systems, and running air slower through a duct system that's not within the building. It's in contact with that duct work longer, and it's going to lose more heat in heating or pick up more heat in cooling. We're not going to be able to cool the air like we wanted to or heat the air like we needed to in heating. Hi, I'm Chris with HVAC Pro Blog, and I want to thank you for watching my videos every week. If you'd like to help support our channel more, head over to my Patreon page where I have options for as little as $8 a month. If you'd like to join the HVAC Design Society and get your questions answered, like I just showed you, we do this monthly for our elite members. So a special shout out to all those HVAC Design Society members in order to help feed us with content and supporting the channel while getting your questions answered. Thanks for joining me this week at HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. I'll see you soon.